With the backdrop of this beautiful lake, what better time to do a review, kind of an update on the refrigerator vent fan that I did last season. What I want to do in this video is go back and revisit the refrigerator vent fan and see what it's doing to help performance, if anything at all, and show you how important it is to have this vent fan. So last season I put in a refrigerator controller, which made all the difference in the world. So that refrigerator has stayed operational 100% of the time. But on top of that, I added a vent fan into the mix on top of the RV where the refrigerator vents out for the absorption refrigerator. And that seems to help keep it cool. That's just what I assume or what I envision is happening when the fan comes on. It comes on when it's hot and it cools down at night and shuts off. So in order to take this cover off, I'm willing to sacrifice the die core that goes into these holes to seal it because I can put some more back on it. I'm taking the screws off and removing the cover. I was able to fish the string down the hole. I fed it down to the bottom. I was able to easily get it down to the bottom. I tied on the string to the sensor and then I came back up on top and I pulled the sensor up about three quarters of the way up the cavity inside the back of the trailer here. So that should give me some good readings along with this other one here that's on top. I'm going to put the cover back on top, just set it on there for now. I've turned off the fridge fan so there's no circulation. It's just natural convection heat, heat rising to go out, sucking in uh, cool air to go in. So maybe about three hours or something like that. I, at the heat of the day, I'll um, go in there and I'll turn on the fan and see if it drops the temperature down, how fast, how much. Looking at my temperature readings through RV Whisper, the outside temperature in the shade is 87. It's been a couple hours. I don't think it's going to get any hotter. This is about the peak of the day and it's going to start cooling down from now. So I'm going to kick on the fan and let's take a look at what that does. Then we'll put it on automatic. I'm really excited to see what this is going to be like. I, I can't say for sure that it's going to be cooler or a lot cooler. I suspect it is, but we're not going to know that until I get these results. It's going to take probably a couple hours, I would think, to cool this down, but we're going to see. I don't have to guess because it's tracking the cool down and the heat up. I've had some questions and people have asked about the refrigerator circuit board that I put in. That board has kept the refrigerator running. We were in a windstorm recently and the back end of the trailer was aimed right into the wind. And you know, the wind's gonna blow out the pilot light. It regularly, consistently restarted back up again. Hat tip to the uh, people over at Dinosaur Electronics. I can't tell you how wonderful it is to have that refrigerator running and operating the way it does. When we first got the RV, it was so crummy. It was so unreliable. At 245, I took the reading um, of both sensors when I turned the fan off. And the one that was dangling was 99.8 degrees Fahrenheit. And the reading of the one that was just sitting on top, that one was 111 degrees. So that's how much heat was just radiating up from the the heating element going up through the cavity there. The next reading I took was when I turned the fan back on and that was at 430. And that reading for the one that was dangling was 117 degrees. The sensor that was on top at 430 was 127 degrees. That's a huge increase. That went from 111 to 127. Taking a quick look at this little heat chart that I made that shows the peak temperature. I had the fan off at 245, so for an hour and 45 minutes, the fan was off. And that's how long it took for the heat to rise to that peak point. I turned the fan back on and it only took a half an hour to recover to bring down the heat in the back of the chamber. And you can see the outside temperature really didn't change much. It stayed about the same. So that's the performance kick there that that Titan fan provides. I think that's pretty good. So it'll be probably late evening when the temperature starts cooling that the refrigerator will really catch up. Now here's the most important thing about this. At 245, the refrigerator was at 37 degrees. And at 430, it was 39.9, so 40 degrees. So that had jumped up three degrees in temperature in the fridge just by having the fan off. Now that the fan was on, the temperature is staying steady. It stopped increasing but it hasn't dropped yet. And that's because it's still hot outside. So it lost what advantage it had by having the fan off. Now the freezer at 245 was 3.2 degrees Fahrenheit. When I turned the fan back on at 4.30, it was at 6.8 degrees. The, the freezer had climbed that much, 6.8 degrees. It stayed at that once the fan was on and kind of leveled off. Both of them had a predictable stop on the graph showing that the fan actually halted the heat from increasing both in the cabinets and inside the refrigerator. So the conclusion for me is that this fan makes a big difference. 
if I would have left it on, everything would have stayed a lot cooler. And historically, since this thing's been on for the last season, it stays cool and it keeps cool all throughout the day. It just keeps that circulation going and it never gets out of control. When we get in the refrigerator and we shut it, we, we don't leave it open a long time, that the refrigerator stays a lot cooler, a lot longer, and it doesn't struggle so much getting cold again. It was way worth installing this heat um, exhaust fan for the refrigerator in the compartment. Um, it's got the control inside. I always leave it on. If I'm not going to be in the RV for a long time, the refrigerator's not on, obviously I'll turn that off. But when we have it on and we're going in between camping trips, it's just an extra margin of helping that refrigerator operate efficiently. My recommendation is if you have a refrigerator that's not working efficiently, grab one of those Dometic uh, refrigerator control boards and replace the one that you have in there. It makes a huge difference with keeping that refrigerator operational. So that's it. I hope you liked the video. Uh, thanks for watching. If you got something out of this and it was helpful for you, click that like button down below. It helps the video and of course it helps the channel. If you're new here, consider subscribing where you'll get to see more videos like this. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.